Welcome to part two of Sporting Life Info Gold's Euro 2020 betting preview. If you've not listened to part one yet, then you can find it at sportinglife.com or on our social channels. And for a comprehensive look at Euro 2020, then find our betting guide on sportinglife.com as well. We'll also be having match-by-match -match previews, daily tips and analysis throughout the tournament as well. Well, guys, in part one, we definitively said don't back England to win the tournament because it's not value. Who is value to win Euro 2020? I'll go first, and I think it, Belgium are the value bet in terms of the market. You can get them around 15 to 2. Um, I think that's a very good price for a team that, that you know, finished third at the last World Cup, still full of quality players, especially in attack. And they've got a kind draw as well. They've got a group in which they should progress quite comfortably. They should win the group in there with uh, Denmark, Russia. Um, and if they win the group, they get a nice draw in the, in the last 16. And the only time they play one of the better teams it would likely be the quarterfinal stage against uh, probably Italy, if everything goes according to plan. So I do think that they are a value bet. Um, the Infocom model backs me up as well. We've got Belgium as our favourites to actually win the competition. Again, at this stage of the competition, it is due to the draw mainly. The fact that they have got a kind draw. They are ranked in a similar sort of level to the likes of um, France and Spain and Portugal. But the draw definitely favours Belgium. And my only downside to them is, is the manager again. It's Roberto Martinez, who, who's not really proven in this kind of sphere, is he? And um, Attack, there is no questions that they've got one of the best attacks in, in the tournament. Lukaku, De Bruyne, Eden Hazard, who, who's been rested for the last two years, um, getting fit for this one. But defensively, there's still some real question marks. I think I saw that Thomas Vermaelen was included in the squad, who currently plays for Bissell Kobe in Japan. So that kind of shows you the depth that they've got in defensive areas. But uh, I think at the price, we've spoken about England and France being short. Then you've got the likes of Spain um, and, and Belgium are at 15 to 2 are definitely one that I'd be looking at getting on side. I already know what you're going to say, Jake. Really good price. And it feels like people are just starting to notice them now. Italy. Yeah, I think Italy are much better than people initially thought. I think people, you're right, people are starting to notice them. I think Mancini's done a really good job. I think there's something like 27 games unbeaten now coming off the back of a 4-0 win against the Czech Republic. I think they're really strong and a bit like what Jake said about Belgium, they're in the better side of the draw. I think, okay, people are going to say that they don't score enough goals, but you don't really need to score that many goals to win these kind of tournaments. Portugal scored one goal in normal time when they won Euro 2016. And I think a massive advantage for Italy is they don't have a huge amount of big names. They don't have a lot of egos. They have... You know, your big players, maybe you're looking at Verratti or Jorginho, they're not stellar names and I think they're a tight knit group and I think they're exactly the kind of team that could win this tournament. They're defensively really strong, as we know, they're Italy. And I think the fact that they're double the price of your France's, your England's, just makes them a little bit standout value. I'm just going to push back on that because I, 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 think I think Italy are uh, priced correctly, but my only... With my only drawback of backing them is the fact that they've not got a very good record against better teams. Like in that run that you talk about under Mancini, I think they've only played Portugal twice uh, of teams inside the world's top 50 or something along those lines, and, um, and, and they haven't beaten them twice. That'd be my only drawback about backing Italy is their capabilities of actually beating a better team. That's fair, but none of those games really came at a major tournament, and I think they're the kind of team that could turn it on. And you're right, they, they would potentially meet Belgium in the quarters, but I think there isn't a team better equipped than Italy to beat Belgium. I think if you go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Belgium, I think they'll beat you, no matter who you are. But I think if Italy sit back and frustrate them, I think they'll beat them. Your kind of football, isn't it? I'd love it. <laughs> I'd love it if they drew nil-nil and beat them on pens. <laughs> Just before we come on to Tom, then um, I mentioned the price is still strong. You can still back Italy at 11-1. to 1. In our Euro 2020 betting guide that came out on the 31st of May, then you tip them up at 12 to 1 to win. Generally now, they've come in as short as 8 to 1 in most places, so people are really noticing them. What would be your advice for people if that's the best price that they can get, where they bet 8s, 9s? Yeah, I probably wouldn't back them at 8s. If you can get 11s, I'd probably take 11s. I think the big reason their value is because they're so much bigger than the other teams and you know they won 10 matches in qualifying they won all 10 games and so did Belgium England didn't win all 10 games I think that's a big thing and I think they're just too big but probably don't back them at eights. 
Yeah, I can't believe after saying that England aren't interested in me whatsoever at the price they are that I think that France probably would. But it's the comparison of France or England. I mean, they're only, what, 9-2, to 5-1-ish to one -ish in places. It's a short price and it's pretty boring just tipping the favourites or thinking that the favourites will win. But, I mean, the 2018 World Cup winners, they came runners-up in 2016. Look at the squad they've got. It's just unbelievable. Um, talent in every position, right from the back through to the front. I mean... Their forward line, they can have, uh, I think, Griezmann and Mbappe and Benzema we're thinking are going to be the starters. You could chuck Giroud in for Benzema, who's a proven goal scorer as well. I know whatever reasons that players haven't been included, I just think that they are obviously feel that they're in a situation where they've got a good harmony in the camp. I think Griezmann has been laughing with Mbappe. Have we seen this playing football manager signing in for Newcastle and Mbappe complaining about how cold it was? But... Um, I, they are I the think J champion. Jake will disagree with you, the, the harmony, he's old Benzema. Yeah, so I wrote this in the outright oh, preview, no, I, I, I think this that, is brilliant, but... yeah, like there's such a harmony in that France team, so what do they do? They decide to bring back Benzema. I just think, no, but they, I don't think they'd make any decisions that they didn't think were right at the time. I mean, this is a manager who has won the World Cup, won the most recent World Cup as well. You would hope that he'd think these things through and... It's just, if you say, for argument's sake, got rid of one player in any position, you could easily replace them with another just unbelievably good player. So, yeah, after saying that England's price, I just can't believe that England are priced the same as France in yeah. terms of a value perspective. They're just, for me, the team that, even when they come up against, we can talk roots, we can talk anything we want. You put France up against anyone, they can beat anyone. And that's, for me, what stands So, out. away from the, the bigger nations who we think could win it, who are the more dark horse nations that we're looking at? Yeah, we, we've got one each, haven't we? And um, mm. my, mine's Denmark. I think that, that they're in a group with Belgium. Very strong in qualifying. Their XG data was fantastic. They should have topped their qualifying group. Uh, and since have been really good. They've got such a, a strong spine. Um, if you think of, you've got Kasper Schmeichel in there, you've got Andreas Christensen, who played really well in that Champions League final when he get, uh, got brought on. Um, uh, you've got Christian Eriksen in there as well, Pierre Emmerich. Uh, Emil Hoiberg as well in, in there, Thomas Delaney who plays for Dortmund. Um, my only issue is will they score enough goals to actually progress that far into a tournament? But as Jake said, you don't actually need goals in these kind of tournaments. If you're solid at the back, you've got every chance of pushing games, such time and penalties, and then you can, they're decided on moments. Um, yeah, the, the draw's kind for, for Denmark as well. If they finish runner-up in Group B, they're likely to face um, the, is it the runner-up in Group A, yeah, Turkey, which could be yeah. Turkey or Wales. Um, or Switzerland, and then after that, um, they play the winner of Group C, which could be the Netherlands, who are a team I think we all want to take on. So um, you're getting around 33s generally for Denmark. Um, I'd bet I'd look at back in them each way as a dark horse. Yeah, so I'm going to go for Turkey, and pretty much for exactly the same reasons Jake has just said. I think if they finish second in their group, which they really could do, I think they're probably a little bit better than Switzerland and Wales then they would play Denmark in the next round and then it would be a head-to-head. -head. <laughs> but it, like you said, if they beat Denmark, then they would likely play the Netherlands, who they recently beat 4-2, or potentially Ukraine. And I think, so Denmark are 33s, uh, Turkey are 66s, so double the price there. And you're sort of balancing that on maybe the, the one game and also if they win that game against the Netherlands, then they're through to the semis, and I think they're about 17-2 to two to make the semis, which could be a decent bet in itself. And, you know, they've got a lot of good players, you know, defensively. Go on, name some players, go on. <laughs> <laughs> defensively, they're strong. They've got Soyuncu and Kabak. They've got um, Yilmaz up front, the uh, AC Milan player. We had a few pronunciation <laughs> practice yeah. sessions before this yeah. podcast, so just trying to... Catch your colleague out there. Yeah. Just a little bit, yeah. Yeah, Chalanoglu, the one. Yep, yeah, that's yeah. the guy. Yeah. yeah, good player. Had a great season with Milan. I just think they're a good price, 66ers, if you're looking for a dark horse. So you just mentioned there, Jake, and you, you tipped them up to make the semi-finals in your outright preview for the tournament as well, which you can read on Sporting Life site and app, and it's in our betting guide as well. So what would make you lean towards backing them for the semi-finals rather than looking towards that kind of each-way play? I think once they get to the semi-finals, they're going to have a really, really tough game. And it's just, you know, you're pushing your luck a little bit too much, I think, for them to get to the final for the each-way money. I think backing them, like, I wouldn't discourage anyone from backing them at 66s each way. It, it'd be fun. But I think backing them at nines is a little bit more sensible. 
Yeah, I think my would probably be Turkey, I think, if I picked anyone. Uh, kind of for reasons you've said there, I just think that the word you use is great fun. I think it would be great fun backing them because I think they could give a run for the money. I suppose if to, to chuck someone else in there, Ukraine might be quite an interesting team actually to follow. Andrei Shevchenko, of course, in charge there. It's not necessarily a team where you'd look at and go, they've got Europe's best players. But I think the thing that probably all three of these teams have in common, that if Euro 2020 took place when it did, I don't think we'd particularly be looking at them. But these nations, and Ukraine especially, compare the 2020 results to 2021, and they've gone and beaten the entire year. They've drawn a lot of games. And I suppose that when we talk about the likes of Italy, the likes of Portugal, you don't necessarily need to win games. You just need to not lose games to do quite well in the tournament. And their form throughout 2021 has been just that. They haven't lost a game. They're proving to be a pretty difficult side to beat. They had issues, obviously, with COVID towards the back end of 2020. And in a group with the Netherlands, you mentioned they're a country we'd all take on at the moment. It would not surprise me whatsoever if I think they're about five to one at a best price of them to win that group. I wouldn't be surprised whatsoever to see them top it. Just another, obviously, it's such, been such a congested season. You know, this 2021 campaign with matches played pretty much every couple of days. In terms of the minutes that players have played in each squad, Ukraine's players have played the fewest minutes in the 2021 campaign. So they arguably, in theory, are the freshest squad heading into the Euros, which could be a massive benefit because a lot of teams, players, you know, you think of England who have you know, they played Champions League final to English clubs with a lot of English players there uh, and Europa League final as well with Manchester United. So that could be something that, that might give Ukraine an edge. Yeah, the interesting thing about all three teams is they're in the same part of the draw and that's the, that's the half of the draw you want to be looking at if you're looking for a dark horse because it's unlikely that a team that's priced 50s or 66s are going to come through the other half of the draw because it's so difficult. You just alluded to that, Tom, that you like Turkey, which moves on to any player bets that you guys like? Because I know that there's one in particular from the Turkish standpoint that you've had your eye on. Yeah, so when I looked at the Golden Boot top goal scorer, Burak Yilmaz, you mentioned there, just seems a, a really kind of shrewd bet. I mean, it was 66s originally. I think you still get 50s into 40s. Now he keeps does getting kind of backed in as the tournament gets closer. But just a wonderful campaign with Lil. I mean, the one, uh, you chuck the doubt in there first is his age. He's, what, 35, 36. The fairy tale side of the story would love him to win a Golden Boot at that age. So if you can stay fit enough, if you can play every game, which has obviously been a bit of an issue. But in France's top flight for a team that went on and won the league, I think it was better than a goal every two games. I think he finished about 16, 17 goals. Really good campaign. And we talked Turkey potentially going far as well. When you talk top goal scorer, a lot of it does need to be done in the group stages. That's the kind of thing that you can see from the World Cup and the Euros. The averages that they're fairly similar. There's a bit more in the World Cup because you've got more games probably to go at. Uh, but yeah, for a, a huge price, kind of each way selection of the top goal scorer, you can get four, five, six places at, at certain places. Just kind of the, the season that he's had, the team that he's playing for, we could expect Turkey to be quite an entertaining team to, to watch. You know, we said their three goals conceded, they were probably very lucky it wasn't at least double that. Um, so yeah, they could be a great, great team to watch. And some early goals would be, would be really welcome in that. Is that where we're looking more towards the each way money there? I think so, yeah, because... You look at kind of the averages, it's about 4.6-ish, I think, over the Euros when you look at Golden Boot. So three would get you in. I mean, players have won it with three, admittedly joint others. You can go three to six, anywhere between that range. So three goals would get him on there. And you talk about Turkey's route, could potentially have five games, maybe even six if they can push it and get far. Some of the nations that will come up against, we're not expecting them to, to bag loads against Italy, but you look at the rest of that group as well, Wales, Switzerland, could be goals in that. The round of 16 fixture, the quarter-final fixture they've got as well there as well. Um, so yeah, one that we're targeting for each way, but I genuinely would not be surprised to see him get the, the accolade himself. I know it's very rare for a kind of player from not a prolific nation, if you will, to pick it up, but I just think it's a huge price for someone who, who really has had a, a great season and is in a, a nation that we've mentioned as potential um, play-wise, anything that, that sticks out for, for you guys? Yeah, I'll, I'll, anything Lukaku related, I'm all over. I think he's the focal point of Belgium's attack. He's usually finishing all the chances. There's no one he's going to be competing with for that spot. Um, Golden Boot, 15-2, to two, best price. Um, I'd be potentially looking at him just to be top Belgian goal scorer. Uh, he was even money backed into 4-5. to five. I'd still take that personally. Same as what you said about Harry Kane. It's difficult to see any Belgian player outscoring him. There's a high chance he'll be on penalties as well. Um, so, yeah, I think that's a really sensible play for me. 
correct me if I'm wrong, is it odds against price that was up to a couple of weeks ago? Yeah, so I was gonna that was gonna be mine until Jake stole it. Um, <laughs> he was he was five to four to be Belgium's top scorer, which is a very big yeah, price. It's gone now, isn't it? That? Yeah, that, yeah, it's yeah, gone. It's gone. Yeah. Yeah, we're in agreement, I think, aren't we? Yeah, I think he's he's going to have a good tournament. In terms of my player bet, I'm I'm going to look at player of the tournament, and I think at eighty to one, I think Marcus Llorente is a decent bet. Well, I don't know <laughs> who's why you're laughing. For by any chance? He plays for Athletic Home and who's their manager? Diego Simeone, uh, the greatest uh, manager in the world. Uh, <laughs> uh, I think he's had a brilliant season this season. He's been one of the best players in La Liga. He scored 12 goals, 11 assists. Only Iago Aspas has got more assists. Got more assists than Messi. He's been a massive part of them winning La Liga. And I think, so they signed João Felix um, to sort of play this role. I think if João Felix would have done what Marcus Llorente has done this season, he would be so sure to be player of the tournament. But because he's kind of under the radar, he's, he's a little bit more of a Simeone kind of player, I think he's big at 80s. And I, it wouldn't surprise me if he has a brilliant tournament for Spain and he's signing for maybe one of the Manchester clubs for 80, 90 plus million in the summer. Now, just because I like the contrast, I want your best bets for the Euros. I want to start with you, Jake P, because you give us an 80 to 1 there, but I think this is going to be <laughs> completely the other way. Yeah, OK, so I'm going to go a bit shorter. Um, the two, I was, it was a toss-up between, was France to win their group. You can get that at 17 to 10, which is way too big. But I think, actually, the better value is back in Belgium to win their group at 5 to 6. Say that again. Five to six. <laughs> what? <It's>, yeah. <laughs> it should be about one to two, surely. The reason I think they're so big is because there's an argument that if they finish second, it's a better route. I think if they finish top, they'll play Italy in the quarters. But if they finish second, they'll probably avoid them. But I think it's really difficult. Like we were saying in the first part, with England potentially throwing the group, it's really hard to manage. And... Their last game is against Finland, which means their first two games are their most difficult games. And you're not going to want to lose one of those. They're going to try out, they're going to go out and win those games. And it's really hard for Belgium to throw a game against Finland. I don't know how they do that. It's, surely it's harder for them to lose than to win. I just think, I don't think Martinez is cynical enough or maybe tactically shrewd enough to throw a group. <laughs> I just don't think it's going to happen. And I think five to six for them to win the group, particularly when you look at like, Holland are something like four to nine to win their group. Yeah. That seems way too big. To be fair, they're, they're in the same situation at the World Cup when they Belgium. They took the hard route and it got stung England, by it. In the they, end. they took the hard route. They obviously yeah. yeah. no issue with topping the group when it comes. Yeah, to I think you're getting that price as well because Denmark and Russia are the teams with home field advantage in that group. But but you look at Belgium's away record. They've got no issue whatsoever playing away from home. Um, so I absolutely am on board with that. And what about for you, Jake? Are you jumping on that as well? No, I've. I've, I've I've got like a three-pronged approach. The one I mentioned earlier, Lukaku, top Belgian goal scorer, is a short price that I like. I like the Italy-Belgium win the group double, which is at nine to five with Skybet. I think that's a really, really big price for two teams that we think are really going to um, win the group quite comfortably. Uh, and then a long shot, I just thought, uh, I quite like France to win the overall tournament. Not a value bet, but I like France. Uh, and France to win the World Cup, uh, to win the Euros, sorry, and Kante to be the player of the tournament, 75 to one. Um, you think Kante, he won the player of the, uh, man of the match in both semi-final legs against Real Madrid and the final against Man City for Chelsea. He's in the prime of his career. Um, and it's very rare that you get a, a forward play winning it, isn't it? I think was it Modric to won it at the World Cup, so it usually is someone in the engine room. That, and Kante's getting the recognition he deserves. So 75-1, to 1, I think, is a lively outsider. Yeah, you've taken mine, so that's fine. <laughs> just replay that bit. I think I'm saving myself some breath there. But uh, no, best player at the tournament. I think there is some real value. And you mentioned Kante is one of probably two that I target. Kante, I think, was 40s. He's now as short as 10s in some places. You, it's kind of that varying from 10s to about 20s that you can get at, at the moment. And I expect that to be short by the time the tournament kicks off. But you mentioned it there that you look at player of the tournament, five of the six winners of this at the Euros have been midfielders. Antoine Griezmann was the first to not do it or not be a midfielder at 2016 when he won it. If you take from 1996, 10 of the 12 have basically not been the top goal scorer of the, the tournament. So we're talking Euros and World Cup. And 11 of the 12 have got to the final, or the nations got to the final. The only one who wasn't was Diego Forlan in 2010, when Uruguay finished fourth, I think it was. So essentially what we're looking for is a midfielder who's going to play in the final seems to be the decent formula. I think we expect France to go far. I know we've mentioned them as potential winners. Kante looks great value. And if not, Paul Pogba 
I think it's about 33, it just seems that the type of player that would catch the eye in voting for a player of the tournament got a bit of flair but just does all, everything correct for that France team as well. So would not be surprised to see a battle between him and Kante to be player of the tournament and probably two best bets. I think it's speculative, it feels like at times as well. You're gambling on France doing well, but they should do and yeah, huge prices on them. What, um, what boots do they wear, by the way? Because it's usually it syncs up, doesn't it, with whoever sponsors the Euros. <laughs> <laughs> when they wear Adidas boots, they win. Where's your foil at? <laughs> <laughs> All conspiracies going around. That's a bit of research Look for everybody it. to do then at the end of this preview to check out the boot sponsors for those two players. So we've packed loads in there. One word answers for this one. Forget the value. Who wins the Euros? I think it's difficult to look past France. England. Uh, France for me as well. Brilliant. Well, thanks for watching. Remember, this is part two of our Euro 2020 betting preview. You can check out part one at sportinglife.com or on our social channels. Um, remember, we'll have a comprehensive look at every single match throughout the tournament, daily tips, analysis, everything you could want for your ultimate betting guide throughout this summer's major tournament.